church. Good morning. So the first reading for today is from Luke 1, um, verse 26 to 33, and it's from the New Living Translation. It says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descend the descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. For you have found favour with God. You will conceive, conceive and give birth to a son, and you, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be con called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of the, ancest the, throne of the ancestor David, and he will reign forever. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Amen. 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 Can we please be on our feet? We're going to go into a time of um, praise and of worship. Um, we are ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's um, just thank God first and foremost for this morning. Lord, we just want to thank you. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Yes. We worship you, Lord, for who you are, because there is none like you. We make you, Lord, the king of our hearts. We make you the king over our lives. We just worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's just lift up our voices to God. Let's just lift up our voices to God this morning and just thank him for all he is. Thank him for his goodness, thank him for his power, thank him for his kindness, thank him for all that he is, Lord, you are good, there is no one like you, Lord, there is no one like you, Jesus, you are the king of all, we worship you, Lord. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from.
it up. Let's sing, let's praise him. Amen. 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 He's a good God. He's been a good father to you. Has he been a good father to you? Yes. Amen. I want us to sing with all of our hearts. Let it be a prayer that comes from your mouth. Not just words.
up your hands to him this morning. We are going to exalt the name of our God on high. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our Savior. He is our beginning. He is our middle. He is our end. He is everything. God, you are everything to us. Just say it in your own words. He wants to hear how you feel. He cares about what's inside. He cares about your voice. He cares about hearing you. Lord, we just want to exalt you this morning. We exalt you, Father, for who you are. Lord, we just worship you. We worship you, Lord. All of who you are, God. We give you glory. We give you glory. We worship you, Jesus.
Amen. 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 I'm going to go ahead and do the second reading. Um, it's from Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. And we're reading from the New Translation. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding the flock of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Do not be afraid, he said. I bring good news that will bring you great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by these signs. You will find a baby wrapped suddenly in the strip of clothes, laying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the army of heavens, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Amen. Amen. This small child, this tiny, fragile life, carries with it the hope of all humanity. This small voice, now crying out in dark chambers, will one day still the raging sea, will call forth the dead, to rise and live. This voice will declare it is finished and shatter the grip of sin. These small hands, now grasping for comfort, will one day restore sight to the blind, will break bread and feed the multitudes. These hands will feel the piercing cold of an iron spike and bring salvation through surrender. These small feet, now wrapped in cloth, will one day travel countless miles upon dusty roads, will stand firm upon rushing water. These feet will crush the snake's head and step forth from an empty tomb, victorious. This small child, this wondrous, perfect gift, is Jesus, our Savior, the promise of eternity. Perfect 
where there was only a slave. His love unites those that iron had chained. Who will tell him of our gratitude? For all of us, he is born. For all of us, he suffers and dies. And for all of us, he lives again. My people, stand up. Sing of your deliverance. Shout for joy and sing praise to the Redeemer. This holy night, this night divine, come and praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore proclaim. Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. <clears throat> I hope you have your singing voices on. Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. very well. Clap, 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 holy people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, you may have your seat. Do you want to just uh, give the person beside you a high five and say welcome to Christmas Eve at the higher place? How are you today? Everything good? <laughs> okay, please have your seat. Yeah. Right. Morning, everybody. How are you today? It's a joyful season, so you might want to give me some joy in the house. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's celebrate Jesus. Come on, everybody. We are not in the funeral. We are, we are here to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Uh, I want to thank everybody that has uh, served us in one way or the other this morning. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Paul, um, and I'm the pastor of the higher place. Many people call me Setman, so feel free to call me Setman after church, and I like it. <laughs> if you're a first, uh, second, or third timer, uh, in the church today, we want to welcome you home. Can we celebrate our guests? Thank you for joining us and Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, we're going to go into a very short Christmas message right now. Please, let's, let's stand up to take this confession, uh, our confession. We make this confession to prepare our hearts and make, us make space for God's word to penetrate 
deep down into us and we are ready for God's word. Okay, so let's take it together. Want to ready go? Today, I'm humble enough to open my heart, my eyes, my ears to let God's word reach me. I participate and listen with humility. I obey and practice what I hear in faith because God is my friend. I'm receptive and fully attentive to receive all the God for me today in his word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah, it's Christmas and I'm about to preach what is probably the shortest sermon I've ever preached because I need to go and get my Christmas gift. <laughs> so don't forget to send my gifts if you, if you haven't packaged it already. But the thing is that, you know, Christmas is about gifts um, and Jesus is the gift of salvation. Christmas is about trees. Some of you probably have trees in your house. But Jesus died on a tree and Christmas is about lights. And Jesus is the light of the world. So that tells me that Christmas is about Jesus. Yeah. So let's read, second, let's, let's read Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, uh, from verse 8 to 20. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. I'd like you to notice the joy surrounding the birth of Jesus. This is a special baby, even though he was born in a manger. Verse 15, when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see, the, let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about his child. Verse 18, and all, and all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. Verse 20, let's read it together. Want to ready go? The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Our subject for our short time together today is called the baby in the manger. The baby in the manger. You know, watching a child being born can be very terrifying for many. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that. The whole process is mind-boggling. Um, if I recently, there was a guy that said something. He said, he's so thankful that women are the ones who give birth to children. They are the ones who do the pushing. Because it can be very, it can be very terrifying. <laughs> so, uh, imagine being in a situation whereby you are pushing with the intensity, that level of intensity, and you have the smells of animals around you. That is pretty much intense. Um, I had a baby recently, but I didn't give birth to my baby in a manger. Yeah, I had him in, in a hospital, in a very conducive and neat environment. None of us here was born in a manger. If you were born in a manger, raise up your hand. <laughs> Nobody was born in the manger except for Jesus. So in our text today we see uh, an introduction to a baby born in the manger, born around animals, around the smell of animals. So what we're going to do today, together today is just consider two questions. The first question is why was Jesus born in a manger? Have you ever thought of that? Why was Jesus born in a manger? Why in the world would God allow his precious possession, his son Jesus, his precious beloved son, Jesus, to be born around animals in a manger. You know, when we, when we see him wrapped, when we see Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in the manger, one can be tempted to say, surely this is not the son of God <laughs> because of the condition. Have you ever thought of it? Why was Jesus born in a manger and not in a posh hospital or a palace? Why was Jesus not born with specialist, specialist doctor attending to him? Is it because Jesus, God cannot afford the pills? <laughs> Have you ever thought of it? Why was Jesus born to Brother Joe, a carpenter, and not to 
a king or a prince. Yeah. At least there were several prophecies foretelling the birth of Jesus. So one would have thought that there would have been adequate preparations for him. Isaiah prophesied about his birth. Zechariah prophesied about his birth. His birth. Micah prophesied about him. So you would have thought that they would have planned ahead, centuries ahead. Yeah. Jesus would have showed up like James Bond with a lot, with a, with a lot of action and attention. So why was Jesus born in the manger? I've got a few answers. First, I think God was trying to communicate a message that this baby would be easily accessible by all. Yeah, because if he was born in the palace, there would have been a lot of restriction from people to get him. Uh, in Africa, you see, when, when you see big men arriving or going, through a, going to a place, you see a lot of security guards around them, protecting them. You can't even, you can't even go near them to talk to them. Yeah. So, God didn't want this baby to be limited by the protocols of men. Yeah. Why was Jesus born in the manger? Secondly, because God was saying that he is not afraid to come into messy places. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The manger is messy. The manger is messy. So, God was trying to say that he is not afraid to come into your brokenness. He's not afraid to come into the messy places in your lives. Yeah. He's not afraid to come into, into, the, into those portions of your lives where you hide, where you hide from people. Yeah. So, you see, the thing is that we don't have to clean up before coming to God. We come to God and He cleans us up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. God can handle it. Look at the person beside you and say, God can handle it. God God can handle it. it. Yeah. What is that messy place in your life? What is, what is that stinking place in your life? Yeah. That addiction, the, the, the issues. God is able to come into those places, penetrate into those places, but we have to humble ourselves to see Him. See, the uniqueness of the arrival of the birth of Jesus testifies that he came here for something unique and something different. His birthplace was unusual. His birth was unusual. And tells me, that tells me that he's an unusual person and he came to do unusual things. Matthew 121. And she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. How possible is that? Somebody coming to save his people from their sins and he's born in the manger. <laughs> saving, the, saving his people from their sins? And the thing is that he had a humble beginning, but yet he was powerful. And that tells me that your background doesn't determine your potential. Yeah. yeah. Your background doesn't limit your potential. Don't let anyone define your future because of your past. Yeah. So Jesus was born in a lowly place because he came for the lowly. Jesus is the good news that brings joy to all people. Hallelujah. Amen. So bring him into your life and everything changes. Yeah, bring him into your life and start seeing changes. Luke chapter 2 verse 10. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news. Jesus is the good news to be shared. Hallelujah. Amen. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. See, contrary to what, people, what many people think, Jesus doesn't take away joy from you. He doesn't take away life from you. Some people think once you give a life to Jesus, you are restricted. You can't have fun. You can't enjoy life. God does not take life away from you. He gives you life. Yes. John 10, 10 says, I've come to give you life and give it to you in what? In abundance. Yeah, that's what Jesus came to do. He came to say, it is done. Religion says do. Jesus says done. It is done. It is done. Yeah, why was this baby born in the, in the manger? Another reason that I have here is that because God likes to hide his special possession before unveiling it. Yeah. God likes to hide his special possession before unveiling it. Now listen to this carefully. You see, God hid his special possession in a manger because he was protecting him and nurturing him. He hid him from the likes of, of Herod. Yeah, the hungry guy who was willing to kill babies. Can you imagine? Somebody is crazy trying to look for babies to kill. Hung, hungry guy. Yeah. See, God has been hiding you. Yeah, and you didn't know it. He's been hiding you. He's been protecting you. See, if God, if God opens your eyes to the things that he's protected you from this year, You'll be shocked. Yes. Yeah, you'll be shocked. I know uh, we, we live in a microwave generation <laughs> where everybody wants everything fast, 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 fast. But sometimes God will hide you and nurture you before he unveils you. Yeah. yeah. So God has been hiding us even as a church. Yeah, he's been hiding us, he's been working on us, he's been nurturing us, he's been preparing us, he's been protecting us for something special. Now look at the person beside you and tell them, God... God is not turning you, you and protecting you and, protecting and training you, and training for, you something for something special. Hallelujah. That's good news. Put your hands together for Jesus. Sometimes God hides you in order to protect you. See, God hid Joseph in the prison. 
before he became a prime minister. He was, was protecting him, was nurturing him. God hid David in the field. He was a shepherd boy. He was busy, busy, busy before he became a king. So that's the first question that we've examined today. Why was Jesus born in a manger? The second question is, why was the birth of Jesus announced to shepherds first? Yeah. Have you ever asked yourself that question? No. Why, why, why was the birth of Jesus announced to shepherds first? In our text, we see the angel appearing to the shepherds at night. Yeah. To announce the birth of Jesus. Why? The angel was not sent to chief priests or to kings or to priests or to posh people to announce the birth. He went straight to shepherds. Why? Luke chapter 2, 8 to 11. It says, That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Yeah. So why was the birth of Jesus announced to shepherds first? Because Jesus himself would be a shepherd. Yeah, yeah. It will be a shepherd that will save the world. Yes. Now, who is a shepherd? A shepherd is a feeder. A shepherd is a sheep owner. A shepherd is somebody who tends uh, the flock himself. Yeah, he's, he takes responsibility for the flock himself. So, um, in, in such cases where you have a shepherd and a sheep, you see that there's so much affection for the sheep. There's, there's a connection between, between the two of them. See, so, when the, when the sheep walks away, what does the shepherd do? He runs after them. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. So, that's, that's what he does. If, if I, it, it may be worthy of note that many, 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 many characters in the Bible were shepherds. David was a shepherd. Uh, the prophet Moses was a shepherd. Abraham was a shepherd. Jacob was a shepherd. In fact, at the heart, at the core, a pastor is a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, when Jesus, when, when the birth of Jesus was announced to angels, it was a testament and a proof that Jesus would be a shepherd. In fact, Jesus later des described himself as the good shepherd. John 10, 14 to 15. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. That's what Jesus did for you. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, Jesus was later described as the, the, the chief shepherd, the great shepherd, and the one shepherd. So this baby is different. Can you say this baby is different? This baby is different. So what can you see about this baby in the manger? Smells? Or potential or revelation what can you see and what will your response to him be what will your life response be see it was the same baby that King Herod saw as it as a threat that the shepherd saw as good news yes. the same baby no they not like half of the baby half of the baby the same baby <laughs> so when the angels told the shepherd about this good news what did they do they ran to go and see the good news Jesus is a good news to be shared. It's a good news to be experienced. Yeah. So, in Luke chapter 2, verse 15, we see the angels, we see the shepherds running. Luke 2, 15 says, when the, when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. about. It's the same baby that many people ignore in this day and age. It's the same baby that is giving people like us life. And it's the same baby that is giving many people around the world life and life in abundance. So without this baby, life will be meaningless. Without this baby, Christmas is nonsense. Yeah. Without this baby who came to save us from our sins, life would be meaningless. As I round off, uh, there is a message in Christmas. There is a message in Christmas. I hope you can see it. There is a message in Christmas. What can you see in the word Christmas? What can you see? What can you see in that word? Christ. Yeah. Without Christ, there is no Christmas. Yeah. Without the baby in the manger, life would be meaningless. Yeah. So, I want to I encourage us today, if you know him, hold on to him. Yeah. If you don't know him fully yet, accept him and watch him make a difference in your life. Here and online, if you don't know him, he's calling you today and saying, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. So, Come home. Can you say come home? Come, come home. home. Can you say stay home? Stay, stay home. home. Come home. Come home. home. Stay home. Stay, stay home. home. Let's just be on our feet as we pray together.
I'm going to lead. I'm, I'm going to lead us in a prayer specifically for people who want to surrender their lives totally to God. Uh, you might be here or you might be online, specifically for you today. Irrespective of what you have done, irrespective of how you've wandered off, there's an invitation to you today. Yeah, Jesus still loves you and he wants you to come back home. So if you're here today, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. That's, that's what Christmas is all about. Yeah, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. I'd like us all to pray for the benefit of the people coming to God for the first time. So we're going to, how, we're going to say that out loud. Say the confession after me right, right now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for, your, for the birth of your son, Jesus. Thank you for the birth of your son, Jesus. I accept you into my life today. Come into me. And make a difference in my life. Be my good shepherd. Come into my heart. Transform me. And give my life a meaning. In the name of Jesus. If you've prayed that prayer, eyes closed, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, or you've prayed it because you're returning back home, to God, raise up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Here and online, lift up your right hand. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Okay, I'm going to pray a second prayer. I want to pray for people who need healing. Yeah, if you, if you need God to heal you, that's what Jesus came. He came to heal the sick. He came to set the captives free. He came to give life. He came, he came to give hope. So if you're here today, you need healing in any part of your body or any sphere of your life. It could be physical healing. It could be spiritual healing. It could be mental healing, it could be any kind of healing, just lift up your right hand and we're going to pray together. Lift up your right hand and we're going to pray together. Yeah. Okay, let, 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 let's just open our hearts. Eddie, could you come on the keyboard? Let's just open our hearts and allow God to touch, touch our hearts right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you uh, for these people. Thank you for these hands raised. Lord, I ask for divine healing in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I ask that today would be a testament. A testament that your birth came to give life life in abundance. Amen. I ask that there be healing in these bodies, healing in the mind, healing in the bodies, healing in every part of people's lives here right now. As people have lifted up, lifted up their hands in faith, right now I ask that there will be healing in their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your word says you send forth your word and your word heals them yeah, and delivers them from their destruction. There's healing and perpetual perfection right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Before we continue with songs and things like that, we're going to take our offerings. Um, you know, giving is one thing we do to honor a God who sent his son, Jesus, into our lives. His only son. He sent him to our lives. So can we, can we pack it our offerings? Watching online, if you want to partake in peace, please feel free to do that as well. If you go to the home page of the website, you're going to see a platform to give. So please proceed to do that. And I'm going to pray over our offerings right now. You know, Luke 6 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over, shall men give unto your bosom. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the privilege to give unto you. Lord, we pray that as everyone has come here today to honor you and honor the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ who grew up in stature, in favor with God and in favor with men, and then died for our sins so that we can be free. Lord, we thank you for this, and we say, accept our offerings and our tithes today in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us and renew our strength, crown the year with excitement, with joy, with passion, with hope for us, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to uh, proceed with the next song, uh, O Holy Night.
Amen. There's more to Christmas. There's more to Christmas. There's more. Mu there's much more to Christmas than candle light and chair. It's the spirit of sweet friendship that brightens all the air. It's thoughtfulness and kindness. It's hope reborn again. For peaceful understanding and for good will to men. It is the birth of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I'm going to take a few announcements. Um, just for us to be aware of the things going on. So we want to encourage everybody to share praise reports of how God is using the church in your lives. In your lives. If there's any praise report, any comment, please feel free to share. It encourages us and encourages the team. Uh, and also, if you have uh, prayer requests, please feel free to walk up to the, the prayer leader. The prayer department would uh, pray for you. Or if you can also make time to come, 10 o'clock on Sundays, we pray together. Please, it's uh, very important you can grow in prayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. On Thursday, we're not going to have live groups uh, this week. We've finished for the year last week. Last week, So please do your prayers with your group. There's a prayer chain going on. Please pray with your groups um, as we pray and lead up to the praise party next Saturday. Praise party next Saturday, of course. Um, how many of you are excited about that? Woo! Everybody's working hard for that. Uh, I want to encourage us to please uh, be a part of what is going on. Please invite your friends. We've said we should have a list of people to invite. Please let's invite our friends. And please let's arrive on time as we've emphasized uh, over the weeks. We're going to talk more on that as the weeks, as the days go by. Okay, and um, there will be 14 days fasting and prayer in January, starting. <laughs> Some people have promised. <laughs> <laughs> but God is going to uh, strengthen us. We're going to get more to you. We're going to hear more about that. And then, uh, of course, we have New Year's Eve next week. On Sunday morning next week, we're not going to be here. We're going to meet in the night for New Year's Eve because we have praise party on Saturday. So, uh, please let us know that. And there will be Leaflets, leaflets around for us to invite our friends after the church. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Have a look at the screen quickly. Mm -hmm.